Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions and I am Andrew Hess. So last week I went over content types and how to create one in SharePoint. Today I want to use those content types in our Power App. And I'm going to show you how to all do that on one screen and how to default the selected items of your content types on your form. So I have already connected to my data source which is a SharePoint list. And in this list uh, called project list, we have two content types, regular projects and software projects. So let's go back to Power Apps. What I wanna do is I wanna have a form and we're just gonna connect to that project list uh, data source. So we have connected to that project list data source, right? And it's only showing a few of the columns it's showing the columns for my regular project. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller and put it on the left side. Right, so we have our project list. Uh, this is our regular projects. I'm going to go ahead and edit fields, add a field, and I'm going to add content type here. So I'm adding content type, and I'm going to put that as first. And I'm going to copy this form because I want everything to be on one screen. You could make this two screens if you wanted to. I want, um, based on a dropdown, to show which form is visible. So I'm going to create a dropdown. And in this dropdown, I'm going to have regular projects and uh, software projects. Those are my two content types. And these are going to be my content types. Right, those are my content types, regular projects and software projects. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set each of these forms to default to new. Default new. But on the change of this dropdown, so in the dropdown I just created, we're going to call it uh, drop content type on a change. Let's see, on change of this dropdown, we're going to say if drop content type dot selected selected dot value equals regular projects, then we're going to make a variable update context, variable content type, and we're going to set that to true. And I forgot my squiggly bracket. Let me put my squiggly bracket in there. So that's going to, the variable content type is going to be true, else it's going to be false. So if it equals regular projects, then this variable is going to be true, else it's going to be false. So on the left side, my form, I'm going to call this form regular. And my right side, I'm going to call form software. So on this one, on the visible property, I'm going to say it's equal to variable content type. And on the right side, I'm going to say visible is equal to not, so exclamation mark, variable content type. And then finally on the screen, on visible, I'm going to update context variable content type true. Now you could have done that a different way, that's just the way I did it. Regular projects, software projects, depending on which one we click on, is gonna are gonna be visible. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna make sure content type is required. So I'm gonna set this data card I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to change required to true. And on software projects, I'm going to set required to true. Okay, so now we've required the content types. Now the next thing is we don't want the content type to default to blank. We want to default the content type to which one we're looking at. Now I did look this up online. I, I didn't figure this all out on myself, but you know, Google helped me. What I did know 
that if you go to settings, list settings, and then you go to your content type, in the URL at the top, there is a content type ID. So we went into the content type in our list settings. Up here is a content type ID. I'm gonna copy that. Now what I found on Google was how to default the content type. So I'm just gonna paste that ID in here. All right, so that's the ID that I literally got from my SharePoint list. And the value is the name of my content type. And so we're gonna put this value in our default selected items. So in this content type of our regular projects, in our default selected items, we're gonna to change to that uh, value in our default selected items. So now regular projects is defaulted. So I'm gonna do the same thing on software projects. So I'm gonna to come to software projects, endless settings. I'm gonna to go to software projects. And then in the URL, I'm gonna grab this ID. So I grab that ID. I'm not gonna put it in here. I'm gonna put it in my ID field and then I'm gonna change this to software projects. All right, so now I have my next default selected item. So if we change this to software projects and we change the default selected items, I've now defaulted to software projects. So regular projects, software projects. And let's see, one thing we wanna do is we wanna differentiate between the forms. So software projects actually has different fields in here. It actually has a couple extra fields and they were customer support and user acceptance testing. And we did this in our last video. So software projects have a couple different fields than regular projects. All right, so now we need a way to submit, right? So we are going to submit with a button but on select, we're gonna use that variable. If variable content types equals true, then what we wanna do is we wanna submit form, form regular. Else, we're gonna submit form, form software. All right, so that's now our submit button. Another thing that you may wanna do just as a touch is in this on change, when you update context here, the first time you may want to um, new form, uh, form regular, and then on the bottom one, new form, form software. Let's see if I type that in right, I'm missing a parenthesis. All right, so I had one extra parenthesis there. So now we're actually on a new form every time we change the dropdown. All right, so this is a regular. So finally, let's do one more thing. Let's make this full width of the screen. And our software projects make it the full width of the screen. So let's go ahead and try out our submit button. So on regular projects, this is our second regular project. And I'm just gonna put in some values in here, uh, test, and then we'll submit a regular project. Now when we go to software projects, this is a second software project. And I'll just put in some values in here also. And we'll submit. And one good thing, you see how we submitted and it's no longer a new form now. If we change, it's back to a new form. If we change, it's back to a new form. So let's check out SharePoint. So in SharePoint, you can now see that we have two different uh, new projects, uh, one under the content type regular projects and the other under the content type of software projects. Now, content types can be used to organize your data, it, it can be really helpful as soon as you get in there. There's all kinds of content types that you can do. There's content types of type 
uh, folder. So you could create folders using Power Apps. Uh, in this example, I just showed how to do with an item content type. There are many, many different uh, content types that you can choose from, and we even created our own. So I just wanted, the main focus of this video was to show you how to default a content type and to have two different content types on a screen. So we have two different forms. They both go to the same list, but they're different content types. And now in SharePoint, we can view them with different views, see our different content types, and both of them are sorted accordingly. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next time.